So let's have a look at how to create fabulous ebook or print book covers all done with Affinity Photo and using PSD Smart Objects or in Affinity speak embedded documents. They're the same thing really so if you want to experiment with Affinity only look for embedded documents and I'll probably do a video on that shortly. Meantime how to design your book covers to start with. You start with your design. Now obviously this exercise is putting it all together into a document that you can use for a cover. But you've got to design it first. There may be more than one element in your cover and you've got to remember this. You can see I've got a man there in black and white and there's two girls. They came with the original template. If you're only doing ebooks it still requires as much effort as though you were doing a hard cover. In other words, the full book. But just the front cover as an ebook on the shelf needs to be visible and catch the eye of the reader. And it needs to tell the genre. An effective cover doesn't just make a design three dimensional, it brings a design to life. When you're working on a cover, keep the following tips in mind. Show the genre in action. In other words, you don't want to look at a book and think, oh, that's a horror book, when in fact it's a romance. So get as close to the genre as you can. You don't tell the story of the book on the cover. That's not what you're about. You're telling the person who's glancing at the book in the shelves what genre it belongs in. Can keep the genre focused. Stay away from stark stock photos. In other words, if you use the common stock photos available on all the free sites like Unsplash and that, chances are everybody's seen them and they're going to say, oh, there's a cheap old stock photo. So do a bit of research. Use really good photos. Showcase multiple well thought out design elements. You can see in that cover just there, there's a building in the background, there's shading, there's um, a white mask, there's three people fading through the background. And in this exercise, we do the ebook cover only. I'm only concentrating on the front cover because even with a print book, you can just do the front cover and use that section as your ebook cover. Now, this one's 6x9, which is a standard book size in the US, and it also just happens to be the perfect size for an ebook cover. So if you do your ebook cover 6x9, the same as this one, you'll be in luck. <clears throat> now have a good look at that image there. Not just the people, but the design and the layout. That's what you're aiming for. Now that image there actually measures 7.1 by 9.2 inches. 2142 by 2770 pixels. That means it will reduce perfectly, or crop as they say, to the perfect ebook cover size. Now remember, ebook covers can be nearly any size, from an iPhone screen up to an iPad screen to your PC or Mac screen. So they need to be scalable. So it has to be a good quality image right from the word go. At least 300 dpi, no, 300 dpi is quite good enough. But a lot of the screens these days are very high resolution, so keep the image large so that it doesn't pixelate when you move its size. So let's alter our cover. We'll start by replacing the central figure, that's that bright-eyed young man, with one I've selected. We're going to change the cover to a thriller spy story. So use the smart selection tool to pick out the figure. And you can see the, uh, the outline of the crawling ants around the figure. I've picked him out and copied him. Copy the figure and place him on a transparent background in this case. So you just open a new document from clipboard and the background is set to transparent and there's the figure that you can use. It's very simple. We're going to replace the image of the young man in the t-shirt with this image. Now, open the template and expand the front cover layers. And you can see them there. They're all expanded. There are 
a number of groups in this and one's called front cover. Select the layer with the cover image on it and double tap on the image icon in the layer. We're doing this with iPad by the way, same in desktop only double click. Double tap on the image icon in the layer which will open the image in a new workspace. It's a little bit tricky this one. Now you've opened the smart object this is your open smart object or in affinity speak embedded document and it looks like there's just the image of the young man there but you can't move your image into place on that one yet because we've got one more step to go you can try and you may have some success it does depend on the template that you've acquired some are better made than others so we want to move our own image into place and we'll do that in the next step Again, double tap on the image of the man, that's the one we were just looking at, that you've done once, now you do it again, double, tip on the, double tap on the image of the man, and in this case there are masks applied. You can see the masks below the image of the man that I've got there, because I've already removed the image of the young man, and my image is in place. But you need to be careful of that, so there's two moves to get into that section otherwise the masks don't apply so paste in your new image into place or place and observe it in the layers panel hide or untick the original image now you can see below my image very faintly there is the unticked or unselected original image now this bit is finished now to get out of it you tap the home button. That's the top left, right in the top left hand corner, there's the left arrow, that's the home button. And that will take you out of that and back to that. Having tapped the home button, you're now back in the main cover. Your new image is in place. Now obviously it needs a lot of work. The whole cover needs a lot of work. You can change the images of the girls. They're in bright colour and the man smoking or lighting a cigarette, I just can't see for the layers panel, he's in black and white. So you'll probably want to do something with that. This is an example. This is not good cover design. This is a working example. Continue to replace all or any other images in the same way. Take your time and always work on copies, never the original. Make a copy of the file. Make several copies of the file. You can see here I've begun to change the lettering as well. Murder at the zoo? Hmm. No, I don't know. Maybe. Working on the title and other text, it can be a long job. Don't rush it. So you can see I've renamed it Zoo Station, which is actually a spy thriller that I'm writing. And it will be due out mm, maybe next year, 2021, who knows. Depends how long it takes to write. But you can see that that's using a template that's available from template suppliers. Now, all of these files I'm using in this, I've placed on my website and the links, as you'll find as usual, are in the description underneath this in the YouTube um, description area. And finally, thanks for watching this fun little exercise. Please remember to subscribe to my channel.